Let's be real. Nobody gets excited about a button until that button can update a record with a single click, generate and send documents and invoices, start an SMS thread or approve, leave and even update HR. Suddenly, that button isn't just a button, but a workflow wrapped in a single click. Hey there, I'm Alex Knowles from automationhelpers.com, and we help companies get set up and automated using industry-leading portals, apps, and integrations. Now, despite the title of this video, we're not just talking about buttons, but rather what they can unlock in Airtable. Airtable buttons are not just shortcuts. They're workflow triggers, process starters, and data messengers. With the right setup, one button can take care of what usually takes time, a few tools, and one too many tabs. But first, we do need to talk about what buttons you have available. Airtable provides us with two types of buttons, a button field and interface buttons, which we will look at both. Now, they are similar, but they do serve somewhat different purposes. Let's take a look at them, starting off with the button field, which lives within your Airtable bases or tables. Here we've got a request review button. Now, a button enables us to do multiple things, different actions. We can open a URL, run a script, submit or send a webhook request, among other things. But let's just focus on the important ones that you will actually use. Open URL and run script. Of course, we should mention that you can send an email with SendGrid, send an SMS with Twilio, but that's only useful if you're actually using those apps. We can send emails, create documents, and send SMSs both through the open URL and run script action. But let's look at these simply. So we've got a request a review button within our base. Whenever a deliverable is ready, rather than us manually updating the status to await client, updating the feedback requested date, checking the shared with client checkbox, updating that last sent date, we can just instead have a button that is simply clicked to do those steps for us. So how do we add a button to our base? Simple, we'll just add a new field, search for button, select it. Let's say rather than requesting a review from our client, we wanna get approval from a manager approval request. And uh, for the button label, we'll call this manager request. And for the text, we can stylize this, stylize the button, I should say, to light green. Maybe you want to have a static URL that your team members jump to every time they're working on a deliverable, but I highly doubt it. You could create a dynamic URL using the URL formula and concatenating your URL with whatever data you need. But let's look at running a script. So we'll select run script and what this will do will prompt us to add or connect an extension to this field. Now we've already created one for the request review button. So we could select that, but of course we only want one extension with one code for each button field. So we'd actually install and create a new one for our new button. But let's take a look at our request review button. And here we can see the script that we created specifically for this request review. Now we'll notice that the status is being updated to a waiting client. That feedback request date is populating today's date. Same with the last sent date and shared with client. Well, that checkbox is automatically selected as true. So rather than our team members manually going through each step among the process, hey, I finished the financial audit summary. I then need to update the status, update the last feedback request, and so on and so forth. We can lean on a button to get that done for us quick, easy, and without stress. Now, if you're familiar with automations in Airtable, you'll know that we can automatically trigger actions to occur when something happens in Airtable. However, a limitation of the button field is that we can't actually select a button field to be the trigger. We'll notice that we do have the option to select when a button is clicked, but this refers to our interface buttons, which we'll look at soon, so make sure you stick around. And that is why we are using the run script action to set up an automation for the button field, as opposed to bringing it into automations. Now, I will quickly let you know that you can too run scripts from automations, but of course, we needed that trigger, so we might as well just keep it directly in the extension. Now, if you're using a platform like Zapier, Make, N8N, or Pipedream to set up automated workflows, you can trigger a webhook request through an open URL. 
So rather than selecting the run script action, you'd actually select the open URL action and then concatenate your URL using the formula and bringing in the correct data. So we took a quick look at the button field and adding it to your base. Of course, those people that have access to your base and your app will be able to create and update records regardless. To keep your data more secure and create an easier experience for your team and your clients, Airtable interfaces are a goldmine. You can build dashboards and portals that show only what matters, guide users with clear buttons, trigger backend workflows, and create a clean experience for tasks like approvals, updates, uploads, and reviews. Plus, mobile interfaces are here, which we will look at later in the video. Okay, jumping back into my app, we'll take a look this time at interface buttons and not the button field. So we'll select interfaces from the navigation up the top there. And we'll notice that we've got this side panel here. This is where we track and configure our interfaces and the pages that are in those interfaces. So we've got team interface where our internal team will manage their deliverables and their tasks as well as get a high level view of how things are going. And then the client portal, which is super helpful in giving updates to our clients, but also receiving feedback. So we'll jump into the team interface first and take a look at what buttons we've used and what buttons we can use. So the dashboard is just that high level view of everything that's happening. Finalized deliverables, current deliverables, feedback, deliverables by type, who's working on what, currently it's just me, but a high level view so you can get a quick look at what's going on internally. We've then got my deliverables, which I have configured to only show the deliverables for the current user, which is something you can do in Airtable. So if we open up this particular page in our team interface, we'll see that we've got each individual deliverable with some details and a submit review button. If we jump back into the editor of this page and we actually select this, we'll notice that we've got the submit review button down here. If we select the settings, then it will open up this configuration. We've got the label there, which is the button text, the action. Now this is important. So we can delete update records. We can apply record templates. Perhaps you want to create a new task or a new project or deliverable. You can create templates for those and use a button to quickly create it. We can also open an external URL or a record, but we want to look at running an automation. So we'll select run automation, and then it will prompt us to select which automation this button runs. Now you'll need to have that already created in your automations, so you can select it from the dropdown. Here we've got deliverable review. Now this is similar to the button field we created. If you've got someone working within the base, they can hit that button to run the script and then action a flow. Whereas if we use a button in an interface, we can do that same thing. We can have the button clicked, which triggers this automated workflow, sending an email to the client saying, hey, we've got a deliverable ready for review. And then updating that record like we talked about with the button field, we've got the table, which is deliverables, and we're updating the status to in review. We've got the runtime of this automation, which is going to update the feedback requested date, shared with client last sent date. And then we can generate a preview, jump back out and take a look at our other interface buttons. So from there, we've also got a deliverable calendar where we can easily take a look at what's occurring when and the admin actions. Now you can decide on who sees these pages. Now I imagine this is going to be a manager coming in. You've got your team working on your projects and the deliverables. Once that is completed, they're able to see, hey, Let's generate an invoice. So if you do share this publicly and you include a button field, you can have anyone and everyone actually action that button. Like here, we have selected to generate an invoice. If we jump back into the project tracker and we actually select that button and edit the field, we'll see here that we've created a URL with parameters where we are actioning off an automation in Pipedream. Here we can see it triggers to create an invoice and then updates our record. We could also have that button trigger something in Docs Automator where we can use a template to quickly create an invoice and then send it to our client. This is a great example of people who are managing projects as opposed to the tasks and deliverables. Once they've seen that it's completed, their review has been accepted from the client, well, they can just hit that generate invoice button. We also see that we've included a complete button and right now this task is updated. If we jump back into the data for the website redesign, website completed, let's go in progress, jump back into interfaces, admin actions, We'll open up this interface 
there we can see that it's not currently complete. So perhaps the admin is managing the project deliverables. They know they've been updated. From here, we can hit complete and that will automatically update the status of this project. And we can also set it so that it sends an email or a Slack message to all involved members. But moving on, we've also got the client portal. If I just quickly open up in the live view, we've got some bookmarks, which can work as buttons. If you select that, that'll take you to the actual portal where they can look at their project, how it's currently running and track the updates. So from the portal here, we can see that we've also got some links. This will enable you to include documents that are important or also here we've included a contact link or button. If we jump into new feedback here, we can see this is where the feedback is actually actioned on the deliverables. So when a deliverable has been updated, ready for review, they'll be asked to provide some feedback on the deliverable and give a rating. And something else that is super exciting is you can access your interfaces from the mobile app. So here we can see we've got the team interface and the client portal. I can work on my tasks while I'm out and about and get updates on how my team is tracking directly from the mobile app. And of course, I can use those buttons to submit reviews or ask for feedback. Not just a cool thing for you and your team, but your clients can also access the mobile app and the interfaces as a guest. Or you could share the web browser link of your interface with your clients and they can access it through their mobile browser. But it's just the same. They'll be able to view the links, the buttons, the details, and submit the feedback form. Now, another great use case of interfaces and the interface button in Airtable is when you need to collect files and documents from your client. You can create a page in your client portal that allows them to upload requested documents at any time and connect a database to that page that actually updates and shows a notification, hey, we need new documents from you. Can you please upload those today? Well, I hope this has been a helpful video on how you can use buttons in Airtable, both button fields and interface buttons to streamline your workflows and create easier processes for your teams and clients. If you are looking to get your business set up and automated, then do not hesitate to reach out to us at automationhelpers.com, where our team of experts are offering a free 30-minute consultation, so book yours today.